right, we had a little bit of a panic. Uh, it, 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 oh, no, 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 they spin. No, no, no. What? It yeah, has yeah, yeah, like that, yeah, like yeah. that. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Left. Yeah. Center. Top right. Top. No. Yeah. Bottom right. Uh. Top. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh my goodness, that was close. And that was the little last one, too. <laughs> we're good ballet. Yeah. Guys, we are so ballet. Oh my god, we're so ballet. <laughs> what uh. data. The old Kapilis, who makes Ottomans, wishes to create one endowed with a soul. When Franz, Wandila's fiancé, passes in front of Kapilis's shop, he spots the old man's latest creation, Kopiella. He thinks she is alive and falls madly in love with her. Jealous of the doll, Swanilda sneaks into the old man's shop. When Franz also enters the shop, he is caught by Kopilus, who tries to use a beverage he made himself to put Franz to sleep in order to rob him of his soul. At that moment, Kopiella comes to life, and with a good reason, Swanilda has taken the doll's place. She breaks the Ottomans and runs away with her fiancé, who she marries at the village fair. Born to a family of lesser nobility, he studied art and law to become a show organizer and an art critic. As an organizer, Sergi commissioned ballet music from composers such as Claude Debussy, Maurice Ravel, Richard Strauss, etc. Sergi developed with other collaborators a more complicated form of ballet and sc screenography with animations aiming to please a broader public than just the artistocari. Thus, Sergi constructed to the bringing together of several arts, painting, music, dance, etc., and to the evolution of ballet as we know it today. Good morning, everybody. It's midnight and beyond. Welcome to the finale of Let's Play Ballet Renee. We've come a long way from the days of babysitting, Mama. Our babies and puyus are all grown up, and our final ballet performance is just around the corner. As we make our way through these last few lessons, as well as perfecting the ones we did in Platinum Rank because I refuse to end this LP off without getting the 100% complete run that I ever so rightfully deserve, I'll just be looking back on all the friends we made along the way, talking about how much each one of them means to me, as I typically do at the end of these group LPs. Just a friendly warning, it's going to get ultra sappy up in here, so I hope you're ready for that. We'll go in order of each of the guest's appearances, so let's start things off with the leader of the bunch. You know him well, Mr. Chris Mad. Oh boy, where do I even begin? By all accounts, this person should not exist. And I mean that in the absolute nicest way possible. In a way, something like Vizdomatic shouldn't even be able to exist or function as well as it does but it really just needs that right person to bring all these people together and make it consistently enjoyable for years on end. And not only is Chris a fantastic leader with an unwavering passion for creating and working with other people, he's also just the nicest person on the entire planet. He's 100% willing to be whatever anyone is in need of, whenever they need it. He's like a best friend and a parent and a sibling and a boss and an arch enemy all rolled up into one. These past two years haven't been easy on anyone, myself included, I cannot stress enough just how horrible it's been for me personally. Out of all the people in my life, Chris knows by far the most details about everything that I've been through and how much it's affected me. It cannot be stressed enough just how much he helped me through each and every day where I was completely and utterly alone and hopeless. Making sure that I was okay and doing literally anything that he can within his power to help me. He was also detrimental in getting my channel back when I lost it in the hacking incident. If it weren't for him and another dear friend of ours, Madrybred, I really don't think I ever would have gotten it back. They both knew how to keep a level head and knew exactly what to do and where to go when all hope had been lost. I'll always be thankful to them for that, 
but there's so much more that came before and after that that I have to be thankful for as well. Chris just sees something in me that I don't. He's there for me when I'm no longer willing to be there for myself. I don't really know what I did to deserve him, but I'll never be done thanking him for all that he's done for me. I can't imagine Vizdomatic being led by anyone other than him, and I will always be grateful for him taking a chance on me and allowing me to become part of this family. I'm so happy for you, Anna. You deserve it. Thanks, Penelope. Sophia has totally changed. It's incredible. I never would have believed the possible, but I actually like her. I think she finally understood there was no point in putting everyone down, and that there's more to life than just discipline. Hi, Anna. Hi, Penelope. Hey, Nadine. Have you heard the latest news? No. Penelope? Amy's going to play Clary in the Nutcracker Suite at the John Frunks Opera. Oh, is that true? Yes, it's true. That's incredible. Uh, Nathan? It's always the girls that gets everything here. That's crazy. What's wrong with you now? Aren't you happy for me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy for you. It's just, I've been working so hard, I never had the same look as you. Do you think we could go out together? What? I don't know, Nathan. Why now? I realize that I like you a lot, Anna. I'd like to get to know you better. Listen, Nathan, I don't want to hurt you, but I don't think it's possible. I get the impression we are very different. But you have my friendship entirely. But I thought you liked me a lot. Me too, but things have changed. I'm not interested anymore. Your ambition to be a professional dancer is taking up a lot of space in your life, and I'd be unhappy. I just want us to be friends. I understand. Thanks for being honest, Anna. Friends! Friends! I love that show! <laughs> what a plot twist! The main girl didn't get together with the main boy that you see on the back of the box art. It's a Christmas miracle! Up next is Kitco, aka Michelle. Michelle is really just the perfect balance of kind, caring, brilliant, funny, supportive, talented, and any other positive trait you could hope to have in a friend. First off, out of all the Viznos, Michelle is the only one who I find is consistently laughing at all of my jokes. Or whenever she doesn't, she just responds with something that was ten times funnier than whatever I just said. Michelle is also the Visno I probably confide in the most on personal matters. Something I very much appreciate about her is that she's willing to be no-nonsense with me despite how often I present myself as the comic relief friend. A lot of people throughout my life aren't willing to see me as anything other than a living joke, so whenever my cracks begin to show, they just end up abandoning me. But Michelle just treats me with common courtesy and makes me feel like an actual human being. She's willing to have those no-nonsense moments with me and help me with whatever I may be going through at the time. She's willing to be blunt whenever I need to hear it, and she's also incredibly compassionate and understanding. She's never once turned me away, despite how much I've gone to her for help. There's something in the things that I've seen her create that just resonates with me and makes me feel like we're on the same wavelength in a lot of ways. I've been eagerly awaiting the day where I get to read her story, Metonia, in all of its glory, because from what I currently know about it, it reminds me so much of the things that I hope to create in the future with my own writing and artwork. All of the Visnomatic members have helped me feel less alone in the world, but Michelle especially has helped me believe that there's people who not only will support me in what I'm going through, but will also understand it. It's reasons like this why she knows that she'll always be my favorite Visno, among other reasons that may or may not involve a cake, and Donkey Kong, and my inevitable demise, eh, inside joke, you had to be there. We are now ready to shine and perform 
in the end of the semester show. But not until we get all the costumes unlocked and we platinum everything. Up next is the one and only Enter Mune. Enter was the first Visno I spoke to when I discovered what the heck a Visnomatic even was. I was brought on as a guest in the past and recorded some videos with him and Chris. It was my first time speaking with Enter and I distinctly remember that he never said hi or introduced himself when I joined the call. He was talking about something with Chris, some show or game or something, and without missing a beat, he just casually brings me into the conversation by asking me for my thoughts on the subject. And just like that, we all just started talking as if we were old friends. He made it so easy and natural to jump into that chat, and that's something that Enter has always been good at. You just feel good when you're with him. He's always pleasant to be around and brings out the best in everyone. He's someone who just likes living in the moment and being happy with everyone. Some of my absolute favorite videos I made on Vizomatic are with him. I'll probably never get tired of the Finding Home video we made. The biggest appeal about Vizomatic to me when I first discovered it is that they were literally able to make fun and enjoyable content out of anything and everything. And a lot of that is thanks to people like Enner who are able to find the bright side in literally anything and everything. Whether it's a AAA title or a Flash game that no one's ever heard of, it's always enjoyable because it's with him. But on top of that, he's also really kind and willing to have those more serious and intimate moments with people as well. No matter the situation, he always just wants to make sure that people know that they're loved, and I'll always be grateful to him for that. Up next is Reba Media, aka Rebecca. I said before that Michelle was the one who always laughs at all of my jokes. Well, Rebecca is the one who could always make me laugh on any given day. Rebecca seriously is the nicest and sweetest person you'll ever meet in your entire life. When trying to figure out who to cast as my partner for the fully voice acting Mystery Dungeon Let's Play, I wanted it to be someone who I knew I would have really good chemistry with, as well as someone who would be willing to go on that incredibly long journey with me. And Rebecca was the perfect choice for that. She was absolutely incredible with getting all of that work done and organizing it perfectly in a way that would make it easy for me to keep track of. She's always been super thoughtful and considerate of me. It always means a lot to me whenever someone comes to me to share something or start a conversation, and I find her doing that the most out of any other friend I have. Whether it's to show me a video or a picture that reminded her of me, or if it's just to randomly gift me with something like her incredible Earthbound artwork that she did just for the heck of it. She also created my current YouTube icon, which I plan to use for the remainder of my time here on this channel. The more I look at it, the more I'm reminded just how absolutely brilliant she is. I gave her some rough ideas of what I wanted the design to look like, but I couldn't have imagined in a million years that it would have turned out this amazing looking. I love every single thing about it, and I've been desperately wanting to get back into drawing so I could go ahead and start making a bunch of things for her and all the other Viznos that would make all of them happy. I finally have the drawing program for it, I just need a computer that could actually run it properly without exploding on me. Uh, one step at a time, I suppose. But even when it's just an out-of-practice rough sketch on whatever piece of paper that I happen to have lying around at the time, Rebecca still cheers me on and compliments my work whenever I have something to show her, and that just means the absolute world to me coming from her. Even when it's just mentioning things that I would like to create in the future, she always likes to hear about it and be involved in the discussion so that she could give me words of encouragement throughout it all. There's never been an interaction with her where she didn't manage to make me happy in some way, shape, or form. She's someone who always wants to be involved in other people's happiness, which means a lot to me and doesn't go unnoticed. Even if it doesn't personally interest her, she wants to see others happy and share things with others that she knows would make them smile. It's something I appreciate more and more as time goes on, and something I'll always be thankful to her for. Just like with her role in Blue Rescue Team, she truly is an invaluable, irreplaceable friend. Our next guest was Reposeful Tube, aka Hunter. Hunter and Chris are the tech wizards of the group. A lot of the magical stuff you see on Visdomatic is thanks to them. And of course, Nulani, who solely works on behind the scenes stuff with us. I still can't fathom how they managed to make all this stuff work, honestly, despite how long I've been involved in it and their best efforts to try and teach me about it. I know it can be kind of frustrating at times to work with someone like me who has such a large barrier in these experiences with all these programs and pieces of technology, but there's never a moment where Hunter isn't willing to help me learn more about it. Looking back on it, it really means a lot to me that he's never given up on me in that regard. That's something I see him do for everyone. Whenever there's an issue that pops up, or even when there isn't one, his first thought is always just, how can I help? How can I make things easier for them? What can I do to contribute to their setup? He's also usually the first one I see to cheer on or congratulate someone when they get through something difficult or challenging in their own personal lives. Even when it's just moral support, he always just wants to contribute in whatever way he can. My favorite moments with Hunter are when we're talking one-on-one. -on -one. 
That's usually when we have our most mellow and personal conversations, and those are the ones that I always try to remember because of how important they can be. He's willing to check in on me and ask the questions that aren't always easy for other people to ask. It's all for the sake of making sure I'm taking care of myself, and it's something that I only ever really hear from him on a regular basis. I want him to know that it's always appreciated. Something I learned recently is that one of his favorite games of all time is Portal 2, which is also one of my favorite games. I just found it really cool to learn that, since I don't usually hear him talk about the things that he likes. Perhaps we aren't so different after all. Whether it's bonding over something we both enjoy, or celebrating things that are individually important to us, I hope we could have more moments like that in the future. Up next is my favorite Sylvia in the world, Dumpling Zowo. Yes, you gotta say the Owo. It's very important. Sylvia is quite frankly one of the kindest and dearest friends I've ever had in my entire life. She's absolutely brilliant in everything she does. Her comedic timing and reaction to things is always perfect. Her writing and artwork are both absolutely beautiful and something that every visitor was always excited to see whenever she has something to share. I wish I had that ability to consistently push out all these creative works that can make each and every one of my friends excited and happy. And she's another one of those people who's willing to accept every different side of me. She's willing to hear me out and help me whenever I'm struggling with something. She's incredibly compassionate and protective of all of her friends, and she never fails to impress or inspire me in some way. Something I've always looked up to her a lot with is how she manages to speak. Whenever I'm listening to her solo streams and she's just opening up about her own personal life or how she's feeling about something or whatever, she's just always so articulate and clear about how she's feeling, while also being very open and sincere. I struggle with speaking in any regard, as I'm sure all of you have surmised over the years. Whether it's through her work or through her own character, Sylvia is someone who always inspires me to want to strive to become a better person. It means the world to me that she accepts me for who I am and helps me along the way of improving all these parts of myself. I hope she knows just how much it means to me, and I hope more than anything that I'm able to repay her kindness someday. Our next guest is our resident pink-bearded Scotsman, Dag Fairy. Fairy? Fari? Guy Fieri? I should probably confirm that with him sometime. Dag is always super supportive of everything I do. He's always enthusiastic to help with voice acting for an LP, or to simply spend time together. He always wants to make sure everyone's having a good time and enjoying themselves. I like how we could go so quickly from being at each other's throats in a life or death game of Mario Party, to being completely chill and collected as soon as the game is over. He's someone who always just makes the most out of any situation and interaction, which makes things even more enjoyable for everyone else and I appreciate his willingness to enrich our lives in things that only he could provide. My life has certainly been improved after becoming acquainted with Mr. Blobby and discovering what a Bahuki is, and the Brave episode is still one of my favorite Vizdomatic videos that I still go back to regularly. I'm glad fate allowed us to become acquainted with one another, despite how far apart we are on the globe. That's something that can be said about all the members of my online family. It's so wonderful that social media has allowed us to find the ones who not only tolerate our quirks, but resonate with them and wish to celebrate them alongside you, because they're just the same as you. You never know who you'll find or where you'll find them, but I'm glad that I was able to find you, Dag. You certainly made me feel more welcome on this planet, and I know I'm not the only one who thinks that. Up next is the first member of Vizdomatic I ever personally discovered and got acquainted with, Edo Bean. There was an era of the internet where I just saw Edo popping up everywhere. She seemed like the best friend to everyone on the entire internet, honestly. She was always super involved and active in every single community, and always super kind to each and every person she ever met. She treats me with the same level of kindness as anyone else in her life. I remember getting to talk to her when I was still just appearing as a guest on Vistomatic, and having such a wonderful time chatting with her. She's also always eager to help out in anything I'm working on, no matter what else may be going on at the time. I sadly haven't gotten to talk to her much in more recent times, so getting to have her as a part of this LP really meant a lot to me. After the recording wrapped up for her episode, we spent a long time just continuing to talk to one another about random things, and it was just a really wonderful time to have that. I honestly think I talked with her the longest out of all the co-coms I had on for this LP. It felt like no time had passed from where we had last spoken to one another. It's so wonderful to have a friend like that. Someone who could just make you feel comfortable and welcome. Someone who's eager to hear how you're doing or share the things that make you happy. She truly is a jack-of-all-trades, master of all. From her artwork to her singing to her streams and GDQ work, she always puts 110% into everything she gets involved in. And there's a reason why she's so beloved in each and every one of these communities. She's a joy to know, and I truly hope we could spend more time together in the near future. Thank you for making everyone's lives such a brighter and kinder place. Up next is one of the founding fathers of his nomadic, Twitches. 
I don't have as many experiences spending time with Twitches as I would like, but I swear to stinking god, every single solitary time I get together with him, there's always some sort of legendary event that takes place that is absolutely unforgettable. From the infamous Mario Party 3 recording with him and Allison, which was my first time talking to both of them by the way, to creating one of my first long-running series on Viznomatic with Doki Doki Literature Club, which was certainly a trip to go through for the first time, to this one time where we were watching these really obscure old web shows and laughing our stinking butts off in the middle of the night. He's just an incredibly fun person to be around. He exemplifies that never-ending fun aspect that I admired so much about Viznomatic when I first discovered it. I'm sure that's what made the channel and the group work so well in the first place. I definitely wish I had more opportunities to talk to him, but I'm always super grateful for the times where we do get to meet up and spend time together. And that leads me into what I want to say about our next guest, Skirts, aka Allison. When I was welcomed into Visdomatic, every single one of them quite literally welcomed me with open arms right away. They were all so kind right from the get-go, and I suddenly had all these new friends who made me so incredibly happy. Twitches and Allison were members I spoke to for the first time during a recording I had set up a while back for an old LP, and it still stands as one of the most enjoyable and hilarious recording sessions I've ever had in my entire life. And it's something that means more and more to me the more I look back on it. And even after moving on to other projects, Allison has still always been an incredibly open and friendly person whenever we get to speak to each other. They're another person who I feel a sort of connection to in the way that we both think and in what we've both been through in our own personal lives. They help me feel understood, and they give me hope that things will be okay someday. They bring so much joy to every single person around them, and I hope you know that we're all here for you, just as you always are for all of us. Thank you for always knowing how to make me feel safe and cared for. I hope I've been able to do the same for you whenever you needed it, and I hope we could spend more time together in the near future. And finally, the last guest of this LP was my dear friend Ash. Ash and another friend of Visno alumni, Eleanor, are part of a very small group of friends whom I actually met and befriended in person first, rather than online. We met at a convention where I met several of the other Visnos in person for the first time, and it was one of the most uplifting and emotionally healing experiences of my entire life. It can't be stated enough just how much it means to me that she was willing to accept me as I was in that environment. The me in person and the me online are completely different to one another. I have little to no confidence in person, and social gatherings are always something I struggle with to this day. And the fact that I was going to be meeting all of these friends in person for the first time, quite frankly, made me petrified. But just like everyone else who had known me for years, Ash just accepted me right away and became another one of my friends just like that. And that friendship continued after the convention, and I have the honor of getting to speak to her regularly with all the other Viznos during our game nights and other daily chats. I can't imagine Viznomatic without her now. She's absolutely incredible in everything she does. Her props and her crafts that she creates are absolutely legendary. She's one of the most insanely talented people I know. And she always manages to make others laugh whenever she's having a good time. Her happiness is everyone else's happiness. And I'm forever thankful to have taken a chance with that trip and come out having such a wonderful new friend and irreplaceable memories as a result of it. And... Those are all the guests that I had on board for this Let's Play. I'm so happy I finally got to bring this Let's Play to life. I've wanted to share these stories and these friendships with all of you for such a long time. And there are even more friends I've made in the VGA community, on top of all of the ones shown off in this LP. There's just so many reasons as to why I hold this community so close to my heart. I discovered Video Games Awesome during the Earthbound Fan Fest back in 2010. When I saw their original Earthbound videos, I was completely won over right away. I remember laughing my stinking butt off so stinking hard that I was having trouble breathing. It was a treasure trove of content and they immediately became one of my favorite YouTube channels. And then I discovered their other show, Awesome Video Games, which was a completely different beast. It seemed like there wasn't anything that these guys couldn't accomplish. They have such a distinct style that I've never seen replicated in any other channel to this day. It never ceases to amaze me what they were able to create, and as a result, I eventually became a member of their close-knit community. Despite how shy and fragile I am in person, they were always the ones who made me feel the most safe and welcome at any convention I saw them at. They always took the time to talk to me, and they remembered me, which really took me by surprise. After I had joined Visnomatic and went to Fraser and Becky's final convention before moving to Japan, I remember Becky talking to me about how she watched my announcement video for joining Visnomatic and how happy she was for me. I was the one who should have been thanking her! It was because of all of them that I wound up meeting all these wonderful people in the first place. No matter how much time has passed, and how much the show has evolved, 
The VGA community has constantly remained close-knit and has been one of the most positive experiences I've ever had on the internet. And it's all thanks to the people running the show making it a place where people could feel welcome. Fraser has worked tirelessly to ensure the happiness and acceptance of each and every one of his viewers. I love that he takes full advantage of having what others would consider to be a small community and take that opportunity to get personally acquainted with each and every person who gives their content the time of day. And the rest of the members were just as willing to be open and accepting as well. I'll always remember the friendliness I was shown from Ben, Kyle, and Deacon. And I wish them all the best in where their new lives have taken them. And of course, I'll always be thankful to Fraser and Becky for continuing to provide a welcoming outlet for all of us to return to and feel like we belong. Every single activity imaginable can become enjoyable when spent doing it with the right people. That's what I got out of Video Games Awesome, and from games like Babysitting Mama, Learning with the Puyus, and Let's Play Ballerina. Even though it's a no-name shovelware Wii title, I absolutely had a blast with this LP. Not just with the guests, but also on the editing side of things. I genuinely got invested in learning more about dancing and stage plays. It's something I was already interested in and was recently learning more about in college, but this just reminded me of what I love about the performing arts. It's all about self-expression, sharing your story with the world and opening up your heart in hopes of inspiring others and also healing yourself in the process. I never got to have many opportunities to do things like that growing up. Most of my first-hand dance experience happened in college when I was actually able to take a dance class for the first time. I was by far the most inexperienced one in the class, but everyone still accepted me and cheered me on as I progressed and bettered myself throughout the semester. And probably my favorite memory of all in college was getting to perform a scene from Dear Evan Hansen, which I'm super excited for the movie by the way. It was really important to me that I was able to share that side of myself that I never really got to do otherwise. I had a wonderful scene partner and I worked tirelessly on performing my acting, singing, and dancing for that assignment. People were really taken aback, and we even started attracting the attention of people outside of the class who happened to be walking by as we were performing, because the acting students didn't have an actual classroom assigned to them because they were the lowest priority in that school, so we just sort of hopped around the area looking for wherever. It was the definition of starving artists, I suppose. But that moment still really meant so much to me, and despite my limited resources at my college that very much didn't cater to its acting students, I managed to feel that bit of magic that I had desired to be a part of for so many years. Despite my inexperience, I had always been enamored by dancers and performers. I attended a creative arts camp when I was younger, and part of me always wishes that I had taken part in every single type of class that the camp had to offer. I wound up sticking with the filmmaking classes for the majority of my time there, but I wonder what might have turned out differently for me had I gotten that experience in poetry and theater and acting and dancing. I've always looked up to all the friends I made there and the things that they were able to create, and I really wish that I had gotten more opportunities outside of that camp to express myself and discover who I wanted to be. I think that's what made me gravitate towards the Idolmaster series when I first discovered it. I had never seen such fluent animation like that from a video game before. I remember first starting out learning how to speak Japanese from their songs, as well as some other Idolmaster videos I found on the internet at the time. I also remember trying to learn each of their dances and exercise routines. It was all a really positive outlet for me to make me more active and comfortable in my own skin. The same goes for my favorite movie of all time, The Greatest Showman, which I'm honestly shocked I went through the entire LP without mentioning even once. But of course I had to get it in there right at the end. It helped me feel seen and it resonated with me in a way that I had never felt before. It amplified my love for performing and it exemplified what I wanted out of my own personal life. To just find a family who would accept me and who I could work towards achieving my dreams with. And I found just that with the people at Viz Nomadic. I know that Let's Play Ballerina of all things may not seem like something that would also inspire me to that degree but you could still see all the effort put into creating this game. All the research that went into the ballet pioneer studies, all of the colorful costumes with their own unique designs, the genuinely funny dialogue from all the characters, and the dance animations that are accurate to legitimate ballet routines. This game was designed by a real ballet company and it shows that even though the video game industry wasn't exactly their field of expertise, the ballet industry definitely was and they were able to share that passion with us through this game that they had created. I can definitely say that I wasn't expecting that with a game like this, but after playing through it twice and becoming the one and only world record holder, 
I honestly wound up getting attached to this world and these characters. I'm glad that me and my closest friends now have this experience that's completely unique to us and that no one else has ever seen before. I hope you all had a fun time in your individual parts, and I hope you all enjoyed seeing the LP in its entirety once it released. And most of all, I hope you all know just how thankful I am for having you all be a part of my life, as well as helping me find where I belong. I can't imagine my life without all of you, and I'll never forget the level of security and safety that I have when we're together. This nomadic remains as the one consistent good thing in my life, and it's only become more and more precious to me as time goes on. I look forward to all of the adventures we'll go on together in the future. I hope more than anything that we'll be able to see each other again in person someday, and that I'll finally be able to thank you all face to face for all that you've done for me. You all gave me a home and a family. It's because of all of you that I finally found the one true place where I belong. Thank you for accepting me. We have finally made it. With the help of all of our friends and all that we've learned, we have made it to our final performance. And it will be of which the likes have never been seen before. Thank you to everyone who helped me make it to this moment. I dedicate this final performance to all of you. Ready, Anna? LRP? Yes, Madame Olga! What is it, Anna? Nervous? Yes, very much. I'm scared I'll forget the movements, the steps, or get a platinum on the final dance in the LP! You'll be fine. Don't worry. You're one of my best dancers. I trust you. You really think that? Of course, you're disciplined and very fine with your transitions. Two essential qualities for becoming a star dancer. Star dancer? Me? Not now. But one day, maybe. If you keep working as hard as this, who knows where it will may take you. Thank you, Madame Olga. Thank you. <laughs> On stage, Clara. It's time to implement every single thing we've learned on our journey in this one final performance. What did we learn exactly? Uh, that we should use our power up right at the beginning of every performance, regardless of the situation. And also, the stinking fever button or the nerve button, it's just the same as any other button. It's just a matter of pressing it at the right time to where we don't have to deal with a bunch of balls. We get the stress balls that show up depending on how well we timed our click, basically. It was as simple as that, and I was just making it a million times more complicated. Because of course I was. <sighs> oh well. And by the way, can I just say that the stinking stress note button that pops up, it looks like a stinking omelette with ketchup on it. I've been thinking that throughout both playthroughs of this game, and I just had to say it at some point never got around to saying it before throughout the entire lp but now we finally have it and now you can't unsee it it's a sinking omelet with ketchup on it because of course it is but whatever and it was actually like only at the end of the game where i finally start hearing songs that i've heard before all these songs i was hearing for the first time through this game which was cool to like learn uh new music and new songs and dances and whatnot but of course, everyone knows the Nutcracker, and everyone has heard the song before. And it just makes me question whether or not this Let's Play actually was copyright safe to begin with. So, though, who knows who owns the copyright for Christmas songs, of all things, because there's only like 10 Christmas songs in existence, and then there's like a gajillion and six covers of those 10 songs. So, maybe it's just the free domain at this point, or maybe Santa owns all of them, who knows. But whatever, this is not the dancing game that has me actually concerned about copyright troubles. Uh, that game will possibly show up in the near future. But for now, we are focused on this performance. 
It's because of the small stage right here that will take us to greater heights in the future. So, let's go ahead and just make the most out of this moment right here and now. It's a very fancy stage when you look at it and everything like that. It's very cool that we kept all the students alive. We managed to survive every ordeal that came our way. And there were no issues like having the sensor bar fall or run out of batteries or anything like that. It was just a really chill and easy time. And I just realized that Anna's doing the Waluigi pose right now, which means that they are in the same universe and that Waluigi will be added to Smash Ultimate or something like that. It's all destined to happen thanks to this Let's Play. You can come back here and let everyone know that you were part of the group that knew about it first. Or something like that. Okay, but as soon as we get this LP done, there will be one more bonus video for this LP. Not with a sinking of balance board, though that might happen in the future. But I'm actually going to upload my original playthrough of this game where I did it all in one sitting because I had to record the entire game in one sitting just to figure out how long the game was before going into the LP and actually scheduling all the guests and whatnot. So I have that original recording and I want to submit that as the world record uh, speedrun playthrough just to see what will happen if they'll actually accept it or not. I apparently have to wait seven days after making the speedrun account to submit a run in the first place, so... I'll see when that gets up, and I'll be sure to let you all know when it becomes official that I am now officially recognized as the world record holder for this game. And even if someone decides to take that title away from me in the future, I'll be happy to know that I was at least the first one to bring it into the spotlight and create such a run in the first place, and such a walkthrough in the first place. And of course, it was thanks to all of you who made it possible. This is your victory, just as much as it is mine. So let's go ahead and wrap up this performance with style and grace, our best confidence, spinning the top wise, believing in the heart of the cards, and of course we'll make sure that we take out the trash when our performance is finally over, because that's how you end off every performance. And that is how you end your career on a high note. Anna, Anna, you, uh... Oh, I think I'm going to cry. Mom, you're too emotional. I know, but it's too much for me. I'm so proud, so happy. My little girl has become a beautiful flower. Mom? Anna, congratulations! You are prodigious! You will uh, work through your stress to give us an extraordinary performance! Thanks very much, Madam Olga, for your good advice and your trust in me! I have something else to tell you! I have the pleasure of awarding you with the Scholarship of Excellence of the Bellaglia Dance Academy! What? Oh! This scholarship will allow you to undertake an apprenticeship at the Danny Dance Academy in the world. Put it to good use. Thank you, thank you, Madam Olga. <laughs> Olga. Dominico. You scared me. Have you considered my offer? Yes. And so... I accept your invitation to dinner. Perfect. I'm pleased. I'll come to pick you up with a limo. See you soon, my dear Olga. Because you couldn't end the story without having two characters get together with each other. <sighs> well, at least the main character ended up single as a Pringle. Penelope? Sophia? I'm here! And me too! I have some fantastic news to tell you! I've been awarded a scholarship to do a ballet course anywhere in the world! Oh, really? And it makes me fantastic! Yes, it's great! Congratulations! And that's not all! Yeah. What else? 
All three of us are going to Brazil! <laughs> Brazil! How? You heard me. I'm taking you with me. Unless you had something else planned. You don't have to invite me, Anna. Of course I do. Things have changed. You are my friend and we'll all go. All three of us. Thank you, Anna. You're a real friend. <laughs> to celebrate, you're invited to my grandmother's funeral. I've asked her to prepare for specialty potatoes a la Vanova. With pleasure. You're not invited, Penelope. Oh, no! There you are! Hi, Anna. Hi, Penelope. Why did you bring me here? The usual park wasn't okay. I have nothing against that. It's Nathan who showed me this place. Nathan, of course. No, I didn't mean to say. Don't worry, I get it. It's Nathan. Not at all. Nathan's a long way away. He's enrolled in a ballet company. I didn't want to talk about Nathan. Uh, no. So you mean to say you have nothing against him and me? Nothing at all. I must seem like an idiot. Listen, Anna. Glorp. Yes, Kenji. Glorp. I've wanted to say for a while, Glorp, that I enjoy spending time with you. Yes, me too. Don't interrupt. I'm trying to say something important. Sorry. Anna, since the moment I first set eyes on you, I've been in love with you. I was trying to play the funny guy, but in fact, it was just to hide my feelings for you. Kenji? I... I have to stop you right away. You're not obligated to answer me or do anything at all. I just wanted to tell you. Now I know that idiot Nathan is far away. I... I'm crazy about you, Anna. May I? Uh, yes, of course. I asked you to meet me here because I had something important to tell you. Really? Yes, Mr. Cheddarbox! <laughs> I wanted to tell you that I like you very much. That I'm in love with you! Is that true? Tell me, is that still the case? Uh, yes, silly. There's a happy ending. Come, come with me, Anna. Where are we going? To Disney World to get married. What? No, maybe later. For now, I'll buy you an ice cream. Come on. You're incredible, Kanji. <laughs> I know. Discipline and finesse are two qualities that every ballet dancer must have, but the secret to becoming a star dancer lies in the way she combines these two elements, which will make her an accomplished and unique artist in her field. And that is Let's Play Ballerina for the Nintendo Wii. The first completed Let's Play of this game on YouTube. Thank you all so much for being part of internet history. This victory belongs to all of us. And this is now officially the final joke Let's Play that will appear on my channel. No more April Fool's jokes, no more shenanigans, and this will be 
our final time with our beloved baby Hank. I couldn't have in a million years imagined how many memories would be attached to this baby, but it's been a part of a lot of running gags and a lot of memorable moments with several of my friends, and I'm very grateful to have had this bundle of joy come into the world and show us all what the meaning of friendship is all about. It's about making sure you never shake the baby. Or something like that. But, really, I am i can't believe I actually went ahead and created all of these Let's Plays. They all have their own personal memories attached to them. Both because of all the friends that I had alongside each and every one of them. And, of course, because of the channel that introduced me to all of these games in the first place. I'm glad I got to share that happiness with all of you. And I know it isn't the end, even though our precious little baby Hank is moving on to kindergarten now. He knows that he always has a home to return to. So thank you all for being part of this wonderful family, of raising this demonic baby, and being part of an unforgettable memory, and most importantly... Thank you for helping me get to where I am today. It truly would not have been possible without all of you, and it definitely wouldn't have been worth it if you weren't all here by my side. Thank you for giving me a reason to want to perform, because when I'm with all of you, it truly is the greatest show on earth. Thank you all for watching my Let's Play of Let's Play Ballerina. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see all of you next Let's Play. For Christmas, Clara receives a nutcracker from her uncle. One night falls, she takes it to bed and places it in her cupboard. During the night, Clara goes to see the nutcracker. In the living room, everything starts coming to life and growing bigger. The toys are moving and mice are coming out of their holes. Clara throws her slipper at the evil Mouse King to save the nutcracker. The Mouse King dies and Clara faints. When Clara wakes up, the nutcracker has taken the appearance of a handsome prince. He tells her that he had been cursed and that only a young girl in love could break the spell. The Nutcracker takes Clara to visit his kingdom with chocolate doors, caramel houses, and trees made of ice cream. A romantic Italian dancer, she was engaged as a prima ballerina at the Marinsky Theater of St. Petersburg in order to play the role of the Sugar Plum Fairy for the creation of the Nutcracker Ballet. Nowadays, the memory of Antoinetta is fading. Sweet dreams.